Hey everybody, as you see in the intro, today's video is going to be about CompCam's products. In the window of full disclosure, through the Speed Oasis side of things, I am a CompCam's distributor and dealer. I stock their parts, I sell them all the time, I use them on most of the engines we build, unless the client requests something different, they are our go-to valve train. But that's not what today's video is about, and they are not sponsoring this video. I am using Comp products for this video. So a friend of mine was talking to me about an engine build the other day that he wants to do. And when we got to the valve train, the first thing he said was, I suppose you're going to use those little black rockers that you put on everything. And what he was referring to was the Comp Pro Magnum rocker, which is my go-to rocker arm for most of the engines that I build nowadays. I do, however, use aluminum rockers from time to time. I just don't build as many of the engines that I put these on as I used to. And this is the Comp Ultra Gold. Now, both of these rockers are 1 6 ratio, 7 16 stud, full roller rockers. How do I differentiate when to use them? And please keep in mind, this is my opinion as an engine builder. Any other engine builder may have his or her own opinion. But this is my opinion of it. And after talking to my friend, he said I should make a video that maybe this could be helpful to some of you guys out there. And I hope you find it entertaining at least and informative. And if it inspires you to go out and do a little testing of your own to help further your own opinion of a rocker arm, please go right ahead and let us know down in the comments. And if you've got any other questions, ask them down in the comments. I'll see if I can get an answer for you. If I don't know, I'll do my best to find out. So let's start with these two rockers and how they're similar they are effectively the same rocker arm they're just made out of two different materials and those materials work a little better one than the other in certain applications and that's the big difference between them they both carry a lifetime guarantee against body failure the pro magnum's rebuildable the Ultra Gold is not. When you wear out the needles or you wear out the tip, you buy more rocker arms. This one, you send it back and have it rebuilt. I typically use the Ultra Gold in street strip applications, trucks that are just daily driver work trucks, not necessarily tow vehicles, but work trucks. I try to keep a little bit of weight down inside the engine if I can. I also use these in some mid-high lift, like 630, 640 range or lower hydraulic roller, flat tappet hydraulic or solid lifters applications. Anytime I go over 630 or 99% of the time I go over 630 lift, I go to the Pro Magnum. But we'll cover that, why I do that in a minute. The Ultra Gold is a great rocker. I've got a, I've had a pair until recently. Had about 315,000 miles on them on a friend of mine's work truck, and he finally wore the Barons out in the Trunion. Motor started feeling a little sluggish, was making a little noise, and what it was, the Barons were gone, and it was starting to just roll onto pieces, and we had to take his motor out and flush all the pieces out of it, and it was time for an overhaul anyway, and put it back together, and put another set of these rockers on it, and he's riding again. Now. Why do I not use this rocker past the 630 lift? Especially with a solid roller cam, you got real high spring pressure. The aluminum body will deflect more, pushing the valve down and collapsing the spring on each cycle than the Pro Magnum will. That leads to fatigue and eventually they could break. Now, I've not had one break yet. I've heard of them doing it. I've seen pictures of broken ones. But I don't know if something else was wrong with the motor or not. I'm not getting into that today. When, if, when and if one of mine fails, we'll address it then. I know the aluminum deflects a little more, but it's lighter over the nose, so it's a quicker reacting valve train. And a quicker reacting valve train on a race motor is important because it's coming off the corner, coming off the line, that kind of thing. That adds up. That's the pros and cons of the Ultra Gold. Pro Magnum. Pro Magnum has a lot less deflection than the aluminum simply because it's steel. It is rebuildable. When you wear it out, you can send them off and get them rebuilt. I've yet to have to rebuild one. 
Mine have six seasons on them, turning well over 8,000 RPM every pass, or right at 8,000 RPM every pass. I use them on all the big solid rollers. I have no wear issues so far that I know of. We'll find out when I break that motor apart. That's the one that had the uh, distributor failure, distributor gear failure that started all these videos if you've been following us since the beginning. I want to open one of them up. I want to do one intake and one exhaust. I want to open them up on the channel. I got to talk with my guys at Comp and make sure I'm not messing anything up if I do that because I do want to rebuild them just so that I know they're back where they need to be because when that motor goes back together, I don't want to have to pull it out of the car for two or three years again. Something to maybe stick bearings in it or something. Because like I said, we do turn the devil out of it. That is my go-to rocker arm. There is a weight difference with these rockers. I'll get my little scale out and we'll weigh that up. I happen to have my mixing scale sitting over here. And we'll do a little weight comparison between the two of them. I've never actually weighed these things. Let me get a clean sheet of paper here on my notebook. Grab my pen. I happen to have my my mixing mm -hmm. scale handy. So let's see. Let's zero it. It's on grams already. All right. Let's start start with the Ultra Gold. Okay. So the Ultra Gold. Weighs 173 grams. Ultra Pro Magnum. Weighs 204. So we're looking at what? 27, 31 grams difference. Alright, next piece of the puzzle. Stud girdle. Why is the stud girdle important? What a stud girdle does is it's best to act like shaft rockers is the easiest way to describe it. For those of you that haven't seen a stud girdle before, um, one of my other videos, once again, when I was putting the 408 back together, it has a set of stud girdles. It's not this type. It has another manufacturer's on it, but they were on it when I got it, so I left them on there. But this is the two sides of the engine. They're still in there plastic. I'm going to leave them that way for now. These bolts squeeze the two sides of this aluminum together and they clamp down on this machine surface on these poly locks this is a standard poly lock this is what holds your rocker arm on the stud if you look in a magazine or see a motor with the valve cover off and it's got roller rockers on it you'll notice that it looks something like this and it's got this little poly lock sitting on top of it the stud girdle poly lock has the mountain surface for the stud girdle and your nuts up here and your poly lock is still down inside the hold area your set screw whichever you want to call it and it just rocks no problem that machine ring in that particular one is for this snap ring and that keeps you from putting the stud girdle down too far over the poly locks and keeps you off top of your rocker arms now when you have any V8 engine, you've got between two and three tons of spring pressure sitting on that valve train at any time because of wherever the lobes are on the cam and the springs are at various states of pushed. If you don't have something supporting the stud that your rocker's on, the stud's actually rocking back and forth as the rocker's moving up and down. It's trying to do this on the stud move the push rod and jump off the valve and it's just trying to do all kinds of crazy stuff because it's total dynamic load inside of a rotating engine the only thing that's not dynamically loaded is the blocking heads themselves in relation to the car everything inside is in some fluid motion dynamic loading and putting various pressures and forces and vectors out and just beating on everything in there the stud girdle ties all those studs together so if the total load is say three tons the stud girdle is going to spread a certain percentage of that three tons out across each rocker arm and that load's going to change at any given point as to which valve is compressing which spring how far on the two sides of the engine and each of these girdles is taking half of that load so 
that's how it helps with stability. It takes the swaying back and forth as the rocker's rocking out of it, or as much as you can. Anything that creates stability in the valve train keeps timing more accurate, keeps valve events more accurate. Anything that makes you more accurate makes your engine more reliable. And in bracket racing, any kind of racing is important, but in bracket racing, it's super important because consistency is everything. And I'm going to do a video, upcoming video on, matter of fact, I might make that Thursday's video, do another installment of Drag Racing Basics, how to win a bracket race. And it all comes down to consistency, but we'll go over that in that video. So this is just another part of consistency. Consistency happens all throughout your build. So that's my quick little why I used the Black Rocker Arms, when I used the Black Rocker Arms, and how they compare to the Ultra Gold Rocker Arms, and when I use those, and why I use those. Hope you found that informational, entertaining. If you got any questions or comments, please make them below. Until next time, as always, practice your craft, practice your skills, learn a new skill, turn it into craftsmanship. You never know how far it'll take you. Nothing's stopping you but you. Until next time, have a great day. This has been Fab Race Mod Repeat.